You know, I said I overdid it before the show on Saturday. Well, I can tell you for sure I overdid it yesterday afternoon, too. <laughs> if you want to hear a little bit more about that, just stay tuned. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Tuesday, September 27th, which means we will be playing this evening at Dickie's Barbecue in Rolla, Missouri, starting around 6 o'clock. Come join us if you can. We always have a good time there. I don't think Beverly's going to be there tonight, so I'm going to see if I can talk Emery into going along and uh, playing her guitar, but you just never know. Sometimes that works and sometimes it don't. Yeah, yesterday I definitely did overdo it. I only worked about the same amount of time, about three hours, but I think I hit the wall yesterday because, boy, I was hurting all night long, just waking up every few minutes, just, you know, just waking myself up in pain and, and hollering, you know, just like, ow, 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 that type of thing. Oh, so I think I'm going to give it a rest today. But I did make some pretty good progress on the uh, the creek project back there. Thank you for all your nice comments on the video yesterday. I do want to address a few of the comments. Uh, several people are worried about the uh, EPA and all that sort of thing. Well, I have guns, so I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> No, I don't think there's going to be much of an issue. It's just a spring-fed little creek that runs down to the river. I say that, I may end up in jail. The other comments I wanted to address were about the uh, my rant on the uh, fix in the truck. You know, uh, the, some folks, you can kind of tell, take exception to the fact that I'm talking about being overcharged. Look, I just want to put it as blunt and plain and plain English as I can. I'll pay for their service. Got no problem with paying for their service. I'll pay for the work they do. That's the key phrase, the work they do. I don't want to pay for the work they don't do. If they're doing work, in other words, someone made the example, what happens if a bolt breaks off? Then they have to spend two hours. I don't mind paying for the work they do. You know, if a bolt breaks off and they have to spend two hours fixing it, I'll pay their two hours. I don't have a problem with that. Honesty is where it's at. You know, as long as everybody's honest, as long as everybody charge an honest, fair rate, I got no problem with that. But to charge $5,000, which it's even debatable whether that part costs $2,500. So they're getting $2,500 for approximately three to four hours work. And it's not even hard work. I mean, honestly, like I said, if you can change a tire, you could do it. Okay, I'm off it. I just wanted to address the questions because I just wanted to make it clear that I don't have a problem paying for the work they do. Got no problem with that whatsoever. Well, I made some pretty good progress on this guitar. You can see the clamps are on here on the lower bout. The upper bout is still off. Now, here's the tricky part on this guitar. Notice how it's crooked. Like, it's way off here and it's even here. How do you fix that? Because <laughs> see, it's even all the way around everywhere else. I've got it pretty darn close. But how do I fix that? Seriously, I mean, that's just nuts. I just don't know how I can make that match up. So we're just gonna have to uh, <laughs> do the best we can with it. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. And I don't really know what that is yet, but We'll bend it into place the best we can, and you know, it's like the carpenters say when they can't get something to fit, they just say, caulk it. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the way this is going to be, because it's obviously not going to fit. Uh, and I got it as close to matching up everywhere as I could get it. I have a short video on the uh, operating the dump truck, and I thought maybe you might get a kick out of that since it's a 1957 Ford F-350 dump truck, and uh, it's in, you know, reasonable shape for one that's in 1957. I just wonder how many uh, 2022 one-ton dump trucks will be in uh, operation 65 years from now. <laughs> so 
it's kind of like that. So you got to take that into consideration when you watch this clip. Show you from inside the truck um, how easy it starts and everything. Now I do have it throttled up a little bit and the reason I have it throttled up is for the dumping power of the pump. But listen to how quick it starts. Yeah, you just barely touch it and it starts right up and it's a rough ride in the truck. It takes all the power you got in your arms to steer it, especially when you're only steering with one hand. And, uh, you know, it, it's gear, geared so low, you can see I've got my feet off of the uh, clutch and the brake, and it's just barely crawling because it's geared so low. I give it a little gas. And it, you have to really get into second gear to be kind of equivalent to first gear in most vehicles. So it's really nice for this kind of work though because it just you can just crawl back and forth and if you don't get in any big hurry, you know, it'll handle it just fine. It's an old truck, 1957. I don't know how many 2022 one ton dump trucks will still be in the road after uh, 65 years or so. Not many, I imagine. That's where we're going over there. So we'll just pull out here and then we put it in reverse and back it up a little bit and again I'm trying to steer with uh, one hand holding the phone in the other and hopefully I don't run off my uh, part here and get stuck that would be real bad so we'll call that good now I take it out of gear and what I do is this is already pulled up that's the that turns the pump on basically and now I pull this to actually start sending the uh, hydraulic fluid to the piston back there but I have to let my foot off the clutch when I do that so I got my foot off the clutch now I pull this back and now you can see that it's going up it's noisy but it's an old truck and it works See that red cylinder down there? I put that on new. That's a big heavy duty cylinder. So I had to rework a lot of things to make that work. But it works. Once it's dumped like that, then I push this back in just a little bit just so it doesn't uh, tr keep trying to go up. I put it in first gear and I pull forward just a little bit to jerk the dirt out of the bed. Just give it a good jerk like that and it all falls out. Then I just push this back in and the bed comes down as you can see. Well there you go. Now we're headed back up to where the Bobcat is to get another load. Well I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing how the old dump truck operates there. And yeah, I hauled 10 more loads of dirt with it yesterday. And uh, that's not that much. That's five buckets fulls of, from the Bobcat. And, and keep in mind, it's the big bucket. So it's five large bucket fulls of dirt fills the dump truck up. So what I'm going to do today, instead of going back there and working and killing myself, I think this afternoon I'm going to build some 8 inch taller sides for the dump truck. I figure that'll give me probably two more buckets. That'll give me like seven buckets uh, that I can put in the dump truck rather than just five. So every five trips it's like two more trips really, um, you know, compared to the way I'm doing it today anyway. Well, that's about it. Hope you can join us this evening at uh, Dickie's. If you can, please do so. And be sure to introduce yourself if you do. We'll see you tomorrow.